So we had three hypotheses for our impact assessment. The first was that in the intervention households who received the interventions that you just learned about, uh, latrine use would increase more than in control households. The second one relates to our theory of change. And it postulates that the changes in behavioral factors, the changes in people's mindsets, were actually mediating the changes in latrine use. And the last being that in intervention households, improvement in safe disposal of child feces would be higher than in control households. To test these hypotheses, we conducted a cluster randomized control trial um, in which we first performed a household listing in all 120 trial villages, then a baseline survey measuring both behavior and behavioral factors, um, and then implemented the interventions in 55 out of um, our villages, had a small gap without intervention, and finally an endline survey, again revisiting the same households that we had already visited at baseline. We conducted a few preliminary checks in order to assure that our results are valid. So the first was we checked the implementation fidelity and we found that 70 to 80% of our endline participants had actually participated in the interventions. The second was we tested whether our intervention and our control villages were similar in terms of socio-demographics and behavior at baseline. This is important to make sure that there is no systematic differences between intervention and control that might confound our results. And we didn't find such differences. And last, we checked whether the dropouts of our study differed from those people who remained in the study. A dropout is someone who, uh, who is not recovered at end line. And again, we didn't find um, significant differences except with regard to safe disposal of child feces. So here come the result slide for, um, uh, with regard to our first hypothesis. And um, we have on the, um, on the vertical axis, we have um, an index of latrine use ranging from 0 to 100. That means 100, 0 here would be a village or a household where no one uses the latrine and 100 here would be complete latrine use. And in our control group, we see that at baseline, latrine use was already very high. It was at 77%, but it increased to 92% at end line. So we see, similar as in the previous studies, we see quite a substantial jump in latrine use in the intervention, in the control group. Looking at the intervention group, we see a similar level of um, latrine use at baseline and an even higher jump to 97% after the intervention. And if we now look at the difference between the changes in the control and the changes in the intervention gives us this difference in difference of 4.5%, um, which was significant. So that means we can adopt our first hypothesis and conclude that our intervention changed latrine use significantly by 5% um, on top of the existing interventions. Um, this finding is supported by the latrine observation index. We did not only ask people whether they use the toilet or not, we also observed the toilets for physical signs of use in order to get a more objective measure of latrine use. I'm not saying it's completely objective, but maybe a bit more objective. And we see a similar trend in our data. Again, we see a jump here in the control group, a bigger jump in the intervention group, and a difference in difference of 6.2%, which was significant. So from both of these outcomes, we concluded that latrine use actually increased through our intervention. This is one thing. The other thing that I would say is even more important and relevant is why did this happen? Do we understand why, our, um, why people change in the control? 
what were the mechanisms of change that actually affected this? And the other question would be, what was the added value of our campaign? How, how did this added value um, in, in latter news, this increase, actually um, happen? And this is what the next slide tells you. And I think it needs a bit of explanation. <laughs> so basically, I would like to start from the right. Um, and um, on the right, we have one box, and this box says lettering use. But actually, it's the change in lettering use that is represented here. And then what we did, we did not only measure changes in lettering use from baseline to end line, but we also measured the changes in the mindset of our participants and of the people of the control. And then we try to correlate the, mind, the changes in mindset of people with the changes in lettering use. And what we see from this graph is that the changes in mindset actually very well predict the changes in lettering use. And this reveals the mechanism of action. It's when through people's thoughts that they changed their behavior. And we find that the perception of what other peoples do and um, negative attitudes towards lettering use, a reduction in these negative attitudes were the key um, drivers of change. So this is for the overall sample, including um, the, um, the, the Swajbhadat activities that were implemented in our study area. So our intervention comes in here. Here we see how our intervention changed the respective factors. And we see here um, the effect sizes, which are quite small as compared to this. This is, makes sense because the effects of our intervention were also quite small as compared to the effects of, of uh, the other sanitation interventions happening. But we see that our intervention was able to effectively change a few of these behavioral factors. So we can conclude from that that our intervention changed people's mindset on top of what was already happening and that this change in mindset resulted in the additional change in lettering use. Okay, um, I would briefly come to um, our last outcome, which is the safe disposal of child feces. And here we don't see, um, yeah, here we have um, a big jump in the control um, from uh, 12 to almost 50 percent, but we have a similar jump in our intervention group. And our intervention was not able to give any added value with regard to the safe disposal of child feces. So what are the key takeaways of this? The first is that latrine use increased in Raicho district tremendously to uh, 92 percent. And that these changes are strongly linked to changes in the mindset of people. I think this is very relevant because it reveals the mechanism of action of how these substantial changes came across. The second is that the Rana's intervention brought significant additional change um, to almost 90 uh, to 97 uh, percent. So we can say that the added value of the Rana's intervention was that it reached and it changed the most change-resistant individuals to adopt latrine use. And then it did this by tackling the underlying psychological drivers of latrine use. Um, I would like to, um, uh, to link, or we will link this to policy recommendations in the afternoon session. So I would like to stop here with the results of our trial and uh, hand over to Rado again. Right. Thank you.